everyone, it's Amy from Pretty Presets and I am going to walk you through editing a mini session today. I recently had the chance to spend time with this cute family and I am going to show you how I edit the session and what my workflow is from beginning to end. The session's already been uploaded. Um, what I do is when I come home from a session, I immediately come over to my computer. I take out my memory card from my computer or from my camera and I put it into a card reader, which I love because the images download so much faster that way. So I um, put the memory card into the card reader, plug that into my hard drive, and I have Lightroom set up to where the images will go into one folder will be created onto my hard drive and one folder will go onto Lightroom. So I just uh, click import and immediately it starts making a folder onto Lightroom. Uh, once that comes over to Lightroom, um, I then come over and I start going through and I flag the images. I had to pause for a water break. Um, I go through, when I do my flagging, um, I know that some people do stars or colors or flags or there's several different ways that you can choose how you're going to um, keep the photos that you're going to edit. What works for me best is the flagging. I've tried the colors, that doesn't work for me because I forget what the colors mean. So I will go through and I've already, I've already flagged the pictures from this session. So, but what I will do is I will, you know, I will click on the images and I will look and see, okay, she is just, <laughs> she is being like, okay, I'm, you know, six years old and I'm going to be silly for the camera. They're not quite ready yet. That's usually how it is the first few pictures. Um, you know, I'm going to go through. Okay, she's still doing her thing. You know, you can see as we go through, it's getting a little bit better. His face is a little like, oh, what are we doing now? Um, by the time we get here, everybody's looking, everybody's doing their thing. Um, you'll notice I explain to clients when we're doing, especially like a family session, that I love for them to touch. I Whoa. love for them to be connected. And so I have them sit in a way that has them nice and close together and has them see how like mom has her hand her arm wrapped around her and she's holding mom's hand right here um they're hooked together they're together um it just creates a sense of unity in a family picture to do that it never fails that when you're trying to record something everybody wants to call you and things pop up on your screen um, so this one's going to be a keeper because this one looks good. If I zoom in on it, then I can see that everybody is in focus. Everyone's doing good. There's this one hair right here, and I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. So we go through and we flag the photos that we're going to keep. So we've got, I think there's about 10 of them in here that I ended up flagging. So I'm looking for images that have good composition, that have good light, that have good focus. When I focus on this little guy, bam, his eyes are in focus, his eyelashes are in focus. Um, we want that for a picture like this because we've got this great detail in the back here and I bet most any you can see right here in the preview window almost any preset I were to choose for him is going to look really good the reason why is because oh I like that the reason why that's almost any preset could work for him 
and not have to really make too many adjustments is because it's exposed well, it's in focus, we're not fixing anything. We're simply just adding to something that already looks good. So see as you, you go up, you can just, you can see all of the different um, presets that, that can work with him. Um, so that's pretty fun. I like to be able to do that and know that different presets can work. Um, his eyes really are that blue. Um, I haven't done anything to his eyes. They were just amazingly blue. So when I am choosing how to flag my images, I am moving my bar along right here. And when I find the photo that I'm going to flag, I just click on the P on my keyboard. So I click on the P and then I keep going. When I have a setup, so for instance, see how brother and sister are like this and they're like that all the way through over here, right? Okay, so I want to be able to, actually, you know what? I have this one clicked. I'm gonna click this one too. I like a smile more in this one. I will ch only choose like one in all of these. I'm gonna leave this one flagged as well because the composition is a little bit different and because the look on his face is a little bit different and I kind of like both. So um, their smiles are a little bit bigger in this picture. So you don't have to choose five to edit when you've got the same setting. So here's all the whole family and I've only chosen one. I don't need, and they don't need, five of the same setup. You need one good shot from there. So if you're choosing more than one from the same setup, then you're just wasting time because that's my opinion. Because you've got, you know, I had to take several shots because I had a young girl who, you know, did this and dad had his eyes closed several times and she's got her head off to the side and you know there was just a lot going on so to make sure that I had that one good shot I had to take several to get there so that is um, how I decide which images are going to be flagged once I have my flagged images and I've gone through all of that then I come over here right here there's this bar click on the arrows and I only want to see my flagged images now. I don't care about the other ones. Um, you'll have to excuse this all right here was a senior session that I had right after this session. Um, I, I don't care about those other images. I didn't choose them for a reason. So I, I keep them on here because when I have them over for an ordering session, and mom says, oh, well, what about, you know, this? Can we have, you know, a different, like, say she doesn't like how Johnny's head looks right here. Maybe she wants a different head. You know, I can go in and I can do a head swap. And I can get that other head from one of those other images that we have. So that's why I keep my raw images until I deliver the order to the client. Once I've delivered the order to the client, I have no need for the raw images again. So I delete the raw images and I only keep the JPEGs that I edited. So now I'm gonna edit this photo. I usually will start with my quick clean and then I will do center light, contrast, I will brighten it up. I love pictures with more light. Um, I'm not gonna sharpen using this because I have females and men there. Um, sometimes I will use all of these and sometimes I don't. It really just depends. I think I'm gonna use that here so I'm going to keep bananas and let's come down here. Do we want to make it matte or not? I do love matte images. 
hazy matte maybe. Ooh, I like that. Hmm. Hazy matte or make matte? Make matte or hazy matte? Yes, you are now in my brain. This is how I kind of walk through what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna leave it at make matte. Um, you know, they're all wearing blue. Let's see what the add blue and green pop. Mm. Not really loving that. So let's undo that. And you know, you don't have to actually choose one from one of these groups. You can take one off. Um, I, I'm gonna take the yellow out because of the yellow that's back in here. Um, Okay, I'm gonna leave that like it is right now. And then I'm gonna come over here. I wanna add a little bit more contrast to it. Just a little bit. I do tend to lean more towards more contrast in photos. I'm gonna soften it up just a little bit. I'm going to bring this down for those highlights. Um, I, when someone is wearing white, good general tip is to bring your blues down, which is also kind of hard in this picture because of all the blue. So I'm going to save that for a brush. I'm going to check my, that my sharpening is good. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit. Um, let's see. Let's go back up here and kind of warm the picture up a little bit more. A little too much. Okay, now you know what um, I love bright and center. Let's see if we should uh, brighten a little, brighten a lot, or brighten center. I can tell from looking up here what it's going to look like, but I think that's a little too bright. Let's work with this a little bit. I like that. Okay. Now we're going to go in and we're going to do just a little bit of brush work. I'm going to use the blue brush on his shirt. Can you see how that kind of took the blue out of his shirt there? Now we're going to do something new and we're going to smooth out mom's, actually you know what, hold on a second, let me see something here. Let's look at mom and dad together right here. Okay, so we're going to smooth on his face. We're gonna go over her forehead here. You wanna make sure that when you're smoothing that you don't go over the eyes and you don't go over the lips. Those two areas off limits when you're smoothing because then you end up with like a Barbie looking person. And that's just not cool. Okay. You know, for dad over here, I'm going to just kind of smooth him right here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, if you notice, mom has a little blemish right here. And then she's got some lipstick on her tooth. So I am going to... Come over here and I'm going to use the spot removal. Let me teeny, teeny, tiny. I gotta get it just right. Okay, we don't want her skin to be used as the right spot. So we need to line this up just right. 
to fix that so that it looks right. There we go. Okay, good. Now, we're going to do this blemish as well. Right there. And I'm going to move this so that the skin we replace the blemish with is actually the right tone. If it's not the right tone, it's going to stand out and it's not going to look very good. And then what I always like to do is when I have had to do that on the skin, I like to just go over the area again and just smooth it out a little bit just to kind of help it blend in a little. Okay. Let's get down there. Now I, can anyone guess what I want to go visit now? I want to look at the sunflowers because this location, um, I shot at a lot recently and I just love the sunflowers here. It just really adds a little something extra. Um, hmm, I don't want to do that one. What you have to be careful for with sunflowers is making sure that you're putting the sunflowers where they would actually belong. You don't want to put flares someplace fake because it takes away from what's really going on. And I just think that sun flares are great, but just make sure that you're using them wisely. Sometimes it's hard to find just the right one. Now, if you're like me, I wonder how many of you have like your favorites for sunflowers. I love Luminous. That's like my, that's what the collection is named after. But I actually love the Luminous Sunflower as well. Um, it tends to be like a good overall. I think I'm actually going to go back to it. I like that. Let's see where this one hits. One in this one. I just wanted to take it off of her skin and then off of his skin. I like that. Okay. So this one was the only one taken in that spot facing that way. Everyone else was facing in all these other ones. They're all standing like over here. So the sun is in a completely different direction. But we kind of have an idea of how we want to edit them. As you can see with these raw photos, they are very, um, they're very flat when they come out. So a lot of times people think that they're doing something wrong, but you're not. So see how I just did just those few things right there? That right there makes a big difference. And it's gonna take a few things to just kind of um, help them out a little bit. I am of the belief that um, you should, that's too bright, that you should um, have your edits be a nice cohesive collection because that way it makes it easier for your clients. My clients tend to order collections um, of images that they can put up on their walls and it makes it really really hard if you're showing them lots of different types of edits and so I like to keep it to where they are all the same and then I usually go back through and I'll do a handful of um, black and whites so where's that at it's over there and honestly, I'm not really too worried about that. Um, I can come in here and adjust that just a little bit. I 
They still look just a little bit cool to me. I'm gonna go to my sun flare. The sun fillers don't transfer over when you do a um, a uh, when you're syncing up. So make sure to realize that so that you know you're gonna have to do that. See that the sunflower doesn't work on a on or the luminous one doesn't work for this one because it made her legs like super super dark. So we have to find the right one that does. I'll throw that little left one there. No. And it's not showing up, it's not showing my, um, or maybe now, yeah, now it will. Did you see what I did? It wasn't showing my image preview over here. So I came down here and clicked on the image and now it's showing there. Sometimes that will happen and it drives me nuts. No, that one's. like this one. I'm not liking what it's doing to the one girl's legs. And I do know that you can adjust them, but I don't want to have to go in and spend the time to adjust every single preset on a photo or just the rays. So that's just not how I want to spend my time. So I try to find the um, the flare presets that are going to work best on my images. I'm going to go here and undo a few of these because I think that they are Okay, let's see. Put that off of her face a little bit and then I think I'll like it more. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Okay, I like this one. I think it needs to be straightened out a little bit. So I'm gonna come up here and just straighten it a touch. Actually, I think that was a little too far. See how the line back here? I think I did it a little too much. There we go. Her legs are a little bit dark down here. I'm gonna leave them because I think that's natural. Um, these these three girls are all um, sisters, and then her and the little boy are brother and sister. Um, it's kind of a blended family. Um, now this picture and this, 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 and this, those all were taken in the same lighting, same everything. So they should, I'm just going to say they should sync up pretty well. And they're looking really dark. I'm going to see why. I wonder why they're so dark. Well, it doesn't matter. We're going to go in and I think it was just a something with the the way that we have the flare and everything that's already on there. So all I have to do is go in and adjust the uh, exposure. So I'm good with that. Are they cute? I love it when a family says to me, oops, let's get this one so we don't forget. 
I love it when a family says to me, oh my gosh, we haven't taken pictures in, you know, five years. I'm so glad we found you and I'm so glad that we are getting our pictures taken. Because it makes it so much more special when that happens. You find yourself wanting to do a better job for them because they have taken the time to seek you out. Oh, I love this. This will be really pretty with an extra sun flare. I did her, the mom's sister's pictures in December and I did these pictures and then soon after I did this session, they booked me to do their entire family's pictures in June. So that's going to be a lot of fun, really good kids. So see how I'm just bumping up this exposure a little bit. I'm sure there's gonna be somebody who could tell me a different way to do this, but I don't know, that's, that's how I do it and how I know to do it. So these have all been fixed. I'm gonna go in and do these ones. These ones I did not sink like these because these two were sitting down on the ground. So the light was different when I did them. So I'm gonna go back up here to my, my thing I do and I'm going to um, do some changes to him. Really like that. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. See if you too, too <laughs> scary. If you do too much clarity, this is what ends up happening. You get it just too much. If you go too soft, and then you get like this creepy kind of edit. So you don't, you, it's really important to like know your limit. For him, I'm actually gonna use this, the um, skin smoothing because he had gotten into the dirt or something beforehand and then he had a, like his cheeks turn red when he plays around. And so if he was not taking pictures, he was playing around, which I totally don't blame him. He's a boy and that's what they do. So, but I, I just remember his cheeks being red like that. We're gonna bring the exposure down a little bit on him. And like I said, his eyes were totally that blue. So I am not touching a thing on his precious baby blues. We're gonna increase this a little bit. I can tell you right now, his, um, his picture is one that I wanna do a black and white on, because that will look really good. What's really nice is with his picture too, you can tell right away that that is going to be one that will go with any preset, because it was exposed really well and because it's got, his eyes are like perfectly focused. So when you have a picture that's perfectly focused like that, I sh this is what my settings were right here when I shot the picture. And you know, I was aiming for right here. So I was standing above him. I always, this is a pose that I do all the time when I have senior sessions as well. And when I'm doing family pictures and I wanna do individual shots of kids they sit down and they'll like sit crisscross applesauce and I have them look up at me and then we do that picture. So I can do this on those and sync them up. Okay, I, I wanna increase, we're gonna kind of Play around with this a little bit. Bring the exposure back down a little bit. 
feel like it has a little too much orange and yellow in it. So I'm gonna move these over just a little bit. This is usually the advice that I give everyone when you feel like there's too much saturation in the skin color, is to move the yellow or the orange or the red. So when I say just a little bit, I really do mean like just a little bit. That is a mole on her head, so we're not touching it. Um, again, we're gonna go over his little cheek real quick. I am going to get that blue brush. Fix cast blue. If you don't have the brush set, I would totally, totally recommend you getting it because it is so worth having. I cannot tell you how often I use the brushes. I would say probably with every session. Um, they're great to have. So knowing that I made some changes to this one, I'm gonna make sure that this one gets unclicked. I'm gonna go back now and sync this one up with that one. Good. Okay. So, and I already checked on these. I do want to, um, I'm gonna see what needs to be cropped. These ones do not need to be cropped. I have a bad habit of not having things straight in camera. And so I am trying really hard to work on that. Um, I love to have things off-centered in camera. So I'm good at that. I'm just not so great at having things even. I'm surprised that I have all of these even, to be honest. I think his face is a little white. Let's darken that up just a little bit. Yeah, that looks better. I like that. See, we go like this. So let's straighten that just a little bit. We're gonna crop this one. And we're going to do some work on mom's face again. She's so pretty and so sweet, her and her sister Bull. They're just really nice people and it's always such a blessing when you get to work with just really nice people. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna go to this one. I like the crop on this one already. It was done in camera, so I'm not going to worry about that. I want to see how noticeable here. You can't really see the the blemish that was there earlier. I feel like this is looking a little bit orange, though. So I'm going to adjust that a little tiny bit. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but just a little bit is all it needed. Okay, let's go find our luminous. I think that's a little too much. 
and you want it to be to go well with the image but you don't want it to take over an image because you want your clients to be the star of the image not necessarily the light I like that that's going to work which is that okay so let's see yep that works there oops no that wasn't the one I think it was this one no Oh, because that one's a vertical image, so it's not going to work. That's right. I get really popular when things are being recorded. Uh, where are you at? Right there. Other side. Yep. I really like that one. And even though it's on her a little bit, I still kind of like it. So I'm going to keep it. And it's okay that it's a different one than, than this one because they were facing the sun in a different way. So it's okay to keep that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a few black and whites. I am going to do that one and this one. The family one. I'm going to start with his. I love the black and white collection. I think it it doesn't get recognized often enough. I there's a certain set that I go through with this and I like there's so many different ones because it goes A through E and there is there's several in each category, especially E, look at all of those. But I tend to do the same ones because I know how I like my black and whites. Um, so I do black and white base three and then I tend to not do anything with B. That's just my own personal style. I don't really like a color tone to my black and white images. Um, and then I do light and contrast because I love black and white images with contrast. And then I do add light because I love the light. And then I do, um, I'll either do clarity a lot or add contrast. It just depends on what the picture needs. So this one I think needs that. And then what I do is I go over here. I make sure that I'm good there and I make sure I'm good here and I come down here. It's really important that you understand that when it comes to black and white images, when you transfer them to black and white, it all starts in camera because if you have a, um, an image that isn't exposed properly, it's gonna be harder to convert it to black and white. But you can see with just a few clicks, changing this to black and white was pretty easy to do. Um, his skin tone doesn't look gray. He, you know, he looks pretty good. So that's all I needed to do for that one. Um, this was with the girls. Another way that I decide which ones I'm going to do black and white is if they were going to hang black and white pictures next to each other, I want there to be an option of which pictures would make a collection together. So we've got one of the family, one of all the girls together, and one of the boy together. So that would be all of them. Like if I only chose pictures of just the girls together, that wouldn't really like be a collection that the parents would be able to do. So I like to keep it fair. So there we go with that. We're gonna go. Light and contrast. And 
You know what I'm wondering? This is interesting. Look, I always do the same thing. His is black and white. Why isn't theirs? Did I choose something wrong? I'm just gonna go back a few steps and see what happened. It's really odd. I do not have an idea of why it did that. Oops, let's change that one. I want to be able to apply. I always apply if I'm creating a virtual copy and I am uh, doing it a different way, I make sure that that's the one. The virtual copy is the one that I'm changing because I don't want my original edit to become the one that is altered too much. I want there to still be that original edit in case I need to go back and reset it. Let's see if there is... I was looking to see if there was another set for the black and white. So let's go in. It's almost like I have to choose a tone now. You know, this, this particular field is kind of funny. They have all kinds of colors in it. So I wonder if that has something to do with it. Okay, let's see. Light and contrast. contrast clarity a little but this one I am going to add some more exposure same thing. Oh, I know why it is. It's because of the flares. So if anybody has just been like shouting at me on your monitor and you're going, it's because of the flares, Amy, it's the flares. That's why. So what I am going to do is I am going to not use those ones because I do not feel like going through and adjusting the flares right now. So what we'll do instead, this one does not have a flare and this one of the girls does not have a flare and this one of mom oh wait yeah that one does have a flare so we'll just stick with doing black and white for the kids because I think I'm already like way over the time that I thought it was gonna to take to do this. But that's okay, right? Right, I don't think this one has a flare. I'm gonna go down and check. Some of you wonder, oh, I don't know what setting I used. I see that question a lot when someone says, oh, can you tell me what preset you used? And someone says, oh, I don't know. This is how you find out. You just go and look in your history and your history will tell you um, what 
settings you used. So you can look in and you can go, I'll have to find an original one to know. Okay, so here is my history for this picture. Okay, so this tells you right here, you can look here and go, okay, I did all these different things. I tried all this different stuff. So that's how you can go in and tell what you did. Okay, I did his black and white. Actually, his black and white, I think, can be the same as that. So we're going to sync that. Let's see. Mm. Let's go in and... There we go. one right here but I'm thinking this one must have had a sunflower as well because it has that different color look to it so I'm going to get rid of that one as well the point is you've seen the black and white edits okay so now what I'm going to do is we're done editing these pictures, we have, we've edited them, we've made any corrections, we've added anything we wanted to add, um, we've done our black and whites. Normally, I would just go up here and click select all, but I can't do that because I have these other pictures that I've edited. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, click control and then um, select on all of them like this. So give me just a minute. And then I'm gonna go up here to, uh, no, that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over here to library. I'm going to click on export. And this is where a lot of people get confused. So let's walk through this. I have mine set up to export to my hard drive. I could do an email or CD, DVD, but I don't. I have them go to my hard drive. Then we're going to export to a specific folder. Um, I don't like them going to the same folder as the original. Um, that's just me. I like them going to a specific folder. So they get, they get moved to their own folder. Uh, we're going to write in the name right here. And I always put in the last name. I don't do anything else right here. File naming, I check this box. I do a custom name, X of Y. When I'm doing Facebook or something else, I'll do like the file name sequence, um, doesn't matter, but when I'm doing it for a client, I do it this way. So that that way when they tell me what images they want, they can say, um, I want one of 16. Um, and then I choose their, I put their last name in right here as well. Start number one. I don't do anything with video. Right here, image format, JPEG. Color space, sRGB. Um, I don't have this clicked because I don't want to limit the file size. I want the file size to be the, um, the largest that it can be for them because I won't know their printing needs if they choose to um, order the CD. Image sizing, this is the most confusing box for people. When I am giving it to a client, I leave this unchecked because I don't want to resize to fit anything. I want it to be as big as it possibly can be. So you do not resize to fit. You leave this unclicked, okay? 
and then you come over here and you enter 300 here for printing purposes. If you are going to load these up to Facebook, you click Resize to Fit, Long Edge. See the choices you have? You choose Long Edge. The reason being is Facebook will compress images. And Facebook has suggested that you put Long Edge 2048 because that is the widest format that Facebook can accept. If you do something different, it will look worse on Facebook. So if you do something larger, it will look worse. If you try to upload a full size file onto Facebook, it will look worse. And people wonder why. It's because you're not following this format. The size, this right here, is the most important thing you can learn when exporting. Because if it's not, if this, if this isn't being followed, then you're going to see your images not look so good. So it's best to learn this, put it on a sticky note and leave it on your screen or next to your mouse, underneath your mouse pad. Put it somewhere where you're going to remember it. Check resize to fit long edge 2048 pixels and then resolution 72 for Facebook or web use only. For printing, resize to fit is unchecked and 300 is set. Okay? I, um, I do not check sharpen because I sharpened in editing. So I leave this unchecked. I'm sorry, that was my last water break. So I leave this unchecked. If you don't do any sharpening, you can sharpen this, but make sure that you choose the right um, settings right here. So that is what we do for export. I have not used the Lightroom presets yet for um, exporting, so I can't give any information for those, but this is how I do my exporting. Um, I'm going to export these for the web so that I can do a blog post on them and show you the images that we went with these so that you can see everything. That is pretty much it. Um, I hope that you learned something today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email um, or post when we get the video up line. And um, thank you for checking out Pretty Presets. Bye.